politically, the U.S. is the backer that arms Israel, that is enabling Israel, that is actually complicit with Israel in carrying out this massacre in Gaza and this uh, basically this ethnic cleansing uh, operation in Gaza. And my very specific recommendation is the United States should say to Israel, look, <laughs> you know, we don't agree with you and we're not going to arm you for this purpose. Because if the U.S. stops the military support for Israel, Israel can't do this an extra day. Over the new year, my friend and colleague in Austria, Fritz Edlinger, recorded an interview with Jeffrey Sachs in which they spoke about the horrible conflict between Israel and Palestine and how to move forward. And as always, Professor Sachs doesn't mince his words. He speaks of responsibilities and charts ways forward. Please enjoy. Would you summarize your main proposals, how to deal with this long conflict, by the way, is the, it's the long unsolved conflict in younger history, because it started already immediately after the Second World War, uh, and it's still unsolved, and uh, the world is listening and watching, but doing nothing. So what are your proposals? But, uh, just to say uh, that uh, this uh, conflict, in a way, started uh, 100 years ago. Uh, it started after World War I. Uh, Britain, in its uh, typical way, uh, promised uh, uh, this uh, land uh, to several different uh, groups, uh, all uh, in typical British cynicism, uh, including uh, a, a Jewish homeland, uh, uh, an Arab state, uh, promise to the French a mandate, you name it. But basically, uh, we've been uh, since the end of World War I and the end of the Ottoman Empire uh, on the question, uh, what is to happen uh, with this uh, land uh, between the Jordan River uh, and uh, the Mediterranean Sea? And in 1947 uh, and 48, the UN uh, which just uh, got formed, uh, had the idea of a partition between a Jewish state and a Palestinian state. Uh, and uh, Israel accepted it. Uh, the Palestinian and Arab side said it wasn't a fair deal. Uh, a war ensued when Israel unilaterally declared its independence. Uh, Israel won that war. And a state of Israel was established, but no state of Palestine was established. Uh, then in 1967, uh, with the, the June 1967 war, uh, Israel uh, took military control over the Palestinian territories as well, uh, meaning East Jerusalem, uh, the West Bank uh, territory, uh, and uh, Gaza. And we've been in that uh, situation since 1967, where Israel has uh, military control over the three uh, areas of what would be Palestine. Now, international law, as uh, reflected in the UN Security Council and UN General Assembly for basically 57 years, uh, has said uh, there needs to be two states living in peace side by side. Uh, I agree with that, certainly. Uh, and uh, international law says that should be along the borders of the 4th of June, 1967. Uh, and I agree with that proposition as well. But starting in the early 1970s, uh, Israel began to settle uh, in the conquered territories. It claimed East Jerusalem for its own uh, 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 country, uh, essentially annexing it, saying that uh, a unified Jerusalem is permanent. Uh, and uh, it put uh, hundreds of thousands of settlers or allowed hundreds of thousands of settlers or a combination of the two into the occupied West Bank uh, and some into Gaza, uh, though the situation in Gaza is more complicated. But essentially, uh, Israel uh, settled in the occupied territories. And the idea 
from the secular point of view was make a two state solution impossible, basically, other than one that Israel would control or dominate. But what happened starting in the 1970s is that these settlers uh, got a mind of their own. Uh, and uh, these are, to a very significant extent, uh, religious zealots, not all of them, but many of them, who say, well, God gave us all this land. We have the right to permanently dominate uh, the Palestinian people. Uh, this is a view that I think uh, most uh, of the world uh, would not accept uh, and uh, the secular world would not accept. Um, but it is a big part of the problem now because over time, this zealous uh, religious movement, an extreme nationalist movement uh, that says all of this land is for the Jews, became the dominant uh, part of Israeli politics. So what's happening in Gaza right now is not a war on Hamas uh, to uh, limit the danger from Hamas, which is actually much more limited than uh, Israel claims, but it is actually a war on the Palestinian people and on the idea of an independent state of Palestine, because this uh, government in Israel and a large part of the population now says, no, uh, there will be one state, it will be Israel, we will control everything. But the whole rest of the world doesn't agree with that. Uh, and uh, they shouldn't agree with that. <laughs> we need two states living side by side in accordance with international law. And my own view is that religious zealotry uh, based on a sixth century BC text of the Bible should not dominate. What we need is uh, what the international community has said for more than half a century is right, two states living side by side. And I advocate that the UN Security Council should impose that solution. Now, uh, it should vote today, as far as I'm concerned, for an independent, sovereign state of Palestine based on the 4th June 1967 borders. And let's get on with it. Uh, now, there's two obstacles. Uh, one is Israel, obviously, uh, and its politics. The other is the United States. Uh, Israel has one backer uh, in this uh, present situation, which is the U.S. Um, this is complicated because the U.S. political system and public do not buy into the greater Israel idea. They buy into a safe and secure Israel. But the U.S. has always supported the two-state solution. But politically, the U.S. is the backer that arms Israel, that is enabling Israel, that is actually complicit with Israel in carrying out this massacre in Gaza and this uh, basically this ethnic cleansing uh, operation in Gaza. And my very specific recommendation is the United States should say to Israel, look, <laughs> you know, we don't agree with you and we're not going to arm you for this purpose. Because if the U.S. stops the military support for Israel, Israel can't do this an extra day, not even an extra day. And so there is a way for this war to stop very practically. There is a political outcome. And that's what I think we should move to. You mentioned, I think, the vast majority of the UN member states shared and they supported. And uh, the problem is that the real power at the UN, in the UN system, is just with the Security Council. And as long as the Security Council has won Sometimes a second, maybe even with Britain, it was only because Britain is the is the source of the problem because this was their colonial power. Uh, but how to move there? I think uh, let let's become precise. I think you yeah. presented really uh, a, a plan with uh, point one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I, I assume that many people uh, know it, but 
please give a short uh, view what the uh, main um, points of your plan. It starts with the full membership uh, of Palestine to the UN, a full membership, because as an observer, they have been already, uh, but uh, full membership is something else. Could you just summarize your sure. proposals? So my basic idea is uh, we don't need more process. We don't need more 10 years of negotiation. Mm -hmm. We don't need another Oslo process. There is no way to say more about, about this issue than has been said for the last 50 mm -hmm. years. We have to understand that the two parties cannot solve this by themselves. Each one is locked into its own extremism, and there's zero trust between the two sides, to say the least. So in this case, we have an international community that is essentially united on this with one crucial footnote, which is the United States has blocked this approach for decades, even though it is, quote, in favor of this approach. Even Biden said a couple of weeks ago, we support the two state solution. But the United States political system has given essentially a blank check to Israel for decades so that it murmurs support for the two-state solution, but it does not enforce it. American politicians have long believed for decades that support for Israel is vital for their political health because they have believed that that's where the big campaign contributions come from. That's in line with the military industrial complex system, which is politically quite powerful. And they believe that's where public opinion is. But in the US, public opinion has turned against Israel because the American people do not want to be complicit in this massacre. And they are not supportive of the so-called greater Israel, which means Israel dominance over Palestine. They are supportive of two states. Every opinion survey for decades has demonstrated this. That's true of American Jews, by the way, not just of the American public generally. We're not so far from that because the Security Council is basically 13 to 1 to 1. Uh, that is 13 countries support what I'm saying. One opposes it, the United States, and one always goes along with the US, that's the UK. Shame on them. First of all, they should grow up. Second, they should recognize they're no longer a world empire. Uh, and third, uh, they should uh, take some responsibility for the mess that they left. So, uh, but aside from that, that's a footnote as far as I'm concerned. The real story here is the US. And I'm trying to say to US public officials, look, you're completely alone supporting something you don't even support. So you have to do something more creative. Now, unfortunately, President Biden's not creative. Uh, he lacks the energy and insight. His foreign policy team is extremely weak. So I don't know whether we'll get there or not, but the domestic politics and the international politics is all pushing in the same direction. Now, what would it mean? To my mind, instead of a new political process, it starts with the outcome. Two states, 1967 borders. Now let's implement that. Second stage, obviously, would be that on that basis, there would be a regional agreement. The Arab states would say we end our state of uh, belligerence or hostility with Israel. We normalize relations. We stop supporting Hamas or other uh, anti-Israel militia groups. We stop funding them. We start arming them. We stop uh, giving uh, political backing to them. That can happen. Why do I say it can happen? Because the Arab and Islamic countries have said so repeatedly. And mm -hmm. they said it recently in Riyadh uh, when they met in an emergency meeting after uh, October 7 and the 
uh, subsequent uh, Israeli invasion of Gaza. So that's the second step is the diplomatic political step. That includes Iran, by the way, uh, because it's not uh, only uh, the Arab states, uh, it's also Iran, which is, uh, of course, a backer of Hezbollah and Hamas. But that's possible, too. But we have to also stop the hostility to Iran, which was agreed with the JCPOA agreement uh, several years ago. And then the United States broke that. And by the way, broke it in part because of Israeli pressure. <laughs> so, you know, this was Israel pushing the U.S. to break an agreement signed with Iran. And Europe, as usual, was pitiful. It just stood by and mumbled because European leaders are afraid of the United States instead of telling the United States the truth. So this is a, another part of it. But anyway, second step is normalizing the diplomatic relations based on the two states. Third step is actually putting in peacekeepers. And the best that I've heard is that this peacekeeping force, which would operate under the mandate of the UN Security Council, would include Americans, would include uh, troops that are uh, drawn from the Arab countries. And the idea would be to create a buffer zone uh, that would protect Israel from incursions like occurred on October 7. And on the basis of this political solution would also demobilize the armed side of Hamas step by step uh, and uh, would show uh, basically that Hamas, uh, uh, which is a political, uh, a military and a cultural uh, force, uh, um, the military side would be ended as part of a political settlement. Uh, and this would be uh, the next step. Uh, the step after that would be actually to promote economic recovery and development after this devastation. There's a lot to be said about this. It's tragic and uh, a measure of human stupidity that in a world that needs so much, the first thing we do is destroy and then have to spend huge amounts simply to rebuild what we destroyed in a matter of days or weeks. But there is a reality now that the Israel has destroyed the habitability of Gaza. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to address this. And so this is a, another reality that needs to be added to the scene. But my basic point is move to a solution, not to an illusion, not to the status quo, not to what Israel wants right now, which is uh, not to talk about the day after, because we know what Israel wants the day after. They murmur it every few days, which is complete control, which is uh, uh, absolutely unacceptable not to talk about, oh, we need to reestablish the Palestinian National Authority, blah, 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 because this is all fake. <laughs> what we need to do is spell out where the solution is. Two states, international law, living side by side, and with peacekeepers, and disarming the threats to both sides. And this is a very practical a set of steps that could be reached. And I think it's not impossible. There are big issues, by the way, that I don't have an answer to. There are hundreds of thousands of Israelis who would be dead set against what I'm saying. They are settling illegally in the West Bank, many of them based on a religious fervor that they think comes from the book of Joshua from the 6th century BC. Mm. We're going to have to address this. Addressing it in human terms may mean addressing it gradually over a few years, not violently and brutally. These are human beings, in my view, completely misguided uh, and uh, illegal in their actions. 
but that needs to be addressed too. So I don't want to pretend, obviously, that I have a step-by-step -step solution to everything. But the point is we've got to stop faking what's going on right now. The answer has been known for decades, but Israel has become more and more radical. And this is very sad. It's become more and more messianic in its politics. This is weird for the 21st century, but it's actually happened. So I want us to look straightforwardly, clearly at what's going on and understand this is not normal debate about security and so forth. This is about whether there's going to be peace and two states or whether there's going to be a, an is, Israeli attempt to dominate millions of Palestinians or brutally suppress them or brutally ethnically cleanse them or kill a lot of them. And to my mind, the only possible alternative and the one that the whole world agrees to is to give political self-determination to Palestine. By the way, there was a vote on that in the General Assembly recently, quite interesting. Uh, every country in the world that uh, voted, voted yes, except for four. Uh, the four were Israel, the United States, uh, Micronesia, country of 113,000 people last time I checked, and Nauru, a country of 12,000 people. Uh, so basically, the whole world has said, get on with it. Thank you.